All right, world history students, today we're going to talk about religion in ancient Rome. The good news about religion in ancient Rome is that you know most of the gods and goddesses already because the Roman gods are the same gods you've already learned in Greece. They just have different names. The other good news is that most of the planets in our solar system are named after the Roman gods. So if you know the planets, you've already gotten a jump start on learning the Roman gods. Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, all are Roman gods. All right, so now you need to start writing on your note sheet if you've written nothing already. Write down that the Roman gods and goddesses are planet gods, and that the Romans got their gods mostly from the Greeks. They also got some from the Etruscans, the people who lived in Italy before the Romans, and from some Indo-European cultures, those people from Central Asia and Europe. Here we see these people that we talked about in class the other day, the Etruscans, or you learned about in the video that you watched. We see the Etruscans, oops, here. We see the Latins in this little yellow spot, and then down here are Greek colonies. So it makes sense that the Romans were influenced by all three. We get our names for our celestial bodies from the characteristics of the gods in Rome. And you can see that there are equivalents for the Roman gods for almost every Greek god. So they all have different names, but they have the same characteristics. Athena is called Minerva, Poseidon is called Neptune, Zeus is called Jupiter, Hera is called Juno. Apollo is the same in both. But other than that, most of them are different. Artemis is Diana. The Romans practiced a religion where they worshiped many gods. Hopefully you know by now what the word for religion with many gods is. Think it to yourself right now. It is polytheistic. So the Romans use religion for the same thing that everyone in history has used religion for, to help them to address their needs, their fears, and their desires. If I need something, I'm going to ask the gods for it. If I'm afraid of something, I'm going to ask the gods to protect me from it. And if I want something, I'm going to ask the gods to help me fulfill my desires. The Romans performed sacrifices and rites in order to get what they wanted from the gods. So what is a sacrifice? A sacrifice is when I give something up because there's something else that is more important to me, that I want more than that thing. So I sacrificed going out all weekend to study for a test, right? I gave up the thing that I wanted to have fun with my friends in order to study. Then there are rites. Rites are like a ritual. It's something that we do the same way over and over again. If you come from a Catholic background, you might have talked about rites before, or other religions um, talk about rites as well. So one example would be um, a funeral. A funeral is an example of a rite. So my example is Ms. Evans was very careful to turn off her cell phone, so it did not go off during the funeral. Write one example for each sacrifice and rites. It could be mine. It could be one that you make up yourself to help yourself remember. So how did religion work in Rome? The Romans believed that the gods and goddesses were responsible for their well-being. Okay, the gods and the goddesses were going to take care of the Romans. In turn, the Romans were responsible for making the gods and goddesses happy. How did they do that? They did it by performing rites and sacrifices to the gods. If they did those rites and sacrifices correctly, the gods would be happy and everything would be fine. If they did them incorrectly, the gods would be unhappy and would make them pay for what they had done. So let's talk about the most important of the gods from Rome. The first is Jupiter. Jupiter is the equivalent of Zeus. 
Jupiter is the chief of the gods. His symbol were the thunderbolt and the eagle. He was married to Juno, and he was considered the protector of Rome, the patron god of Rome and all of its citizens. There is lots of artwork in ancient Rome that was dedicated to Jupiter. So we can see here's a column that was decorated in dedication to Jupiter. And sometimes if you didn't have enough money to build a temple in ancient Rome, you just build a really fancy column to honor who or whatever it was. And then there is in right in the middle of Rome next to the forum, which we'll talk about soon, which is like the National Mall, an area with lots of government buildings. There was a huge temperature to Jupiter right in the middle of the forum, which tells us he was a pretty important guy. His wife is Juno, who is known as Hera in Greece. She is both his sister and his wife. She's the queen of the Olympian pantheon. She's the goddess of hunting, the protector of marriage, and she's best known because she was always jealous of Jupiter's affairs and upset about them. So that's the aspect of her that we talk about the most. Apollo, we talked about when we talked about Rome, he was known for archery, healing, music, for prophecy. If you went to see the oracle, that was at the temple of Apollo. He was known for poetry. He's the god of the sun. He's the son of Jupiter and Diana's twin brother. And he was always shown carrying a bow, like a bow and arrow, or a lyre, which is this kind of harp-like instrument that he's carrying in this picture. He is usually shown as a young athletic guy and like the most beautiful man that you can imagine, especially in Greek art. Then we have Diana, his sister, or Artemis, to the Greeks. She's the goddess of hunting, chastity, childbirth, and wild animals. She's associated with nature, and she had begged um, Jupiter, or Zeus, to never have to get married because she didn't want to have to be confined by marriage and have to obey her husband. I like her a lot. Then we have Minerva, who is Athena, the goddess of wisdom, war, and chastity, and the patron goddess of the city-state of Athens, if we think back to Greece. And lastly, we have Venus, or Aphrodite. Venus is the goddess of love, marriage, and fertility, and she is born of the sea, and this is a very famous painting from later in history that shows Venus arising on a clamshell from the sea, and this is how she was usually shown, is coming out of the sea. And she's almost always shown unclothed um, because she is the goddess of love and fertility and marriage, okay? All right, religion lets us see some of the key differences between Greece and Rome, and this is an idea that we're gonna come back to over and over. Greek religion is very idealistic. I want the gods to be perfect. I want my life to be perfect. I'm gonna sacrifice to the gods, make everything perfect. Roman religion is pretty practical. If I'm a Roman person, it doesn't really matter if I believe in the gods. It matters that I make my sacrifices and I do my rites, and then you know things are gonna go the way they're gonna go, and hopefully the gods are gonna look on me favorably. We see examples of this in where they built their temples. The Greeks would pick out the most beautiful place to build their temple. They'd build it on the top of a mountain. They'd build it wherever, as long as it was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place. The Romans didn't really care. The Romans built their temples wherever there was room because they were just stopping by the temple on their way to go do other things. All right, it was just another thing that they thought that they needed to do as part of their daily lives. And I think we can think about how some of us think of religion in both of these ways today. Some of us are more idealistic and some of us are more practical about it. But these are characteristics that are typical of Greek thinking and Rome thinking. The Greeks really looked at the world as an ideal place. They wanted to find the perfect version of everything. And the Romans kind of just wanted to get stuff done. And we'll talk about that idea over and over again throughout this unit. Those are your notes on Greek religion. Go back and fill in anything you missed on your note sheet. Remember, you will have a note check or open note quiz next time I see you.